What's up everybody and welcome back to Off The Shelves, my monthly Blu-ray haul collection update video. A couple of days late, would have liked to have this out on the first, but it's been a wild ride around here lately. So nonetheless, pretty decent little collection and certainly a bigger video than last month was. Last month was pretty small. Um, I've got two different stacks here. One of them is brand new movies that I have bought. The other one is movies that are either older films that I picked up for the first time or Screen Factory releases or 4K, something like that. Um, so two different styles here. So first off, I'll just go ahead and start it off with the new films. And like also, always, I'll give you my little mini review for these, tell you what you should do um, as far as my, my ranking goes. But uh, some of these I have not had a chance to see yet. First one is Gemini Man with Will Smith. This movie is every bit as mediocre as everybody said that it was. Um, I love Will Smith. This is a movie that seems like if it would have came out in like the early middle 2000s, it probably would have been a huge blockbuster, like a summer smash. Um, but this one is just a very mediocre movie. The effects on it are very cool sometimes and very distracting sometimes, especially in the action scenes. It almost feels like people are like punching rubber. Um, but uh, the, the story itself is just kind of mediocre. It didn't really go in anywhere that I didn't see coming from the trailer uh will smith is great but just it's okay so i would not go out and buy this one i would actually say save your money and just uh, stream this one uh, one that i wish that i could get some damn time to watch and that's ford v ferrari this is one that i missed in theaters it's one that i've missed for a couple of weeks now while it sat on my shelf but i definitely wanted to check it out so this is the 4k that i've bought everybody says how wonderful it is so i don't really need to ask for opinions down below but let me know what your thoughts are uh, I do plan on watching this one very soon. Parasite. This is the best picture winner, the one that caused some controversy and some applause when it won. Uh, this is a movie that I did see before it won the award. Uh, I liked it. It wasn't necessarily my favorite of the year. It wasn't anything that hit me on a level that it's hit a lot of other people, but I bought it. I rewatched it again with Holly, who was really interested in checking it out. And it's definitely a good movie. Like, I can't take anything away from it. It's unique. Uh, it tells its story well. It's got some cool twists and turns along the way. Um, just know who you are walking into it. Don't get bought up into the hype necessarily that's going to be the greatest movie of the you know this generation, as some people are calling it for some reason. But uh, it's a very good movie that if you like foreign films and can watch them, definitely worth checking out. So I would say go out and buy Parasite. My number two movie of last year, number one horror film of last year, Dr. Sleep. Um, I have not had a chance to check out the director's cut yet. I actually let my parents borrow this so that they could watch it, and they absolutely loved it. So I have no comments on the longer extended cut of this, but this is absolutely a go-out-and-buy-it film. I thought it was phenomenal when I saw it in theaters. Very few negative things to say about it, and I can't wait to check out the director's cut. So I actually liked this cover better than the Steelbook, so I just went ahead and bought this one. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. This is a movie that had my interest to a certain degree because I love the story of Mr. Rogers. I love Tom Hanks. Uh, and it seemed like when, when you throw Tom Hanks into this role, whenever I first heard about it, I was like, oh, best picture winner, best actor winner right there. Uh, it seemed like everybody wasn't as in love with it as you would think on paper. So I'm a little bit curious of where the flaws are in this film, but I have not had a chance to check it out yet. But just wanted to give it a shot. Here's another one that blew up the uh, this movie sphere this award season uh, that I had no interest in seeing, and that was Jojo Rabbit. Uh, I'm not even entirely sure what this movie's about, to be honest with you. I know it's quirky and it's weird because of who's directing it, but um, after everybody has talked about how wonderful it is, I wanted to give it a shot. Have not had a chance to check it out yet. Knives Out. This is a film that I saw last year, did not have the time to review, unfortunately, but I really liked it in theaters, rewatched it, and absolutely loved it. Like, this probably should have been in my top 10 of the year. It was just on the outside of it when I did my video, but it probably should have been in there. So this one has high recommendations for anybody that loves whodunits. Um, this is the type of movie that I like to see Ryan Johnson do. This is where he excels, when he can write and direct and do something unique like this in a smaller genre. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's a director that necessarily works well in huge... $200 million blockbusters like he did with Star Wars, but you know, we can argue Star Wars in another day. But this one is absolutely worth your time and money, so go out and buy this one. This is one I, I, I am intrigued on, but I have no idea what it's about, and I have no idea if I'll like it. The Color Out in Space uh, with uh, Color Out of Space with Nicolas Cage. It's Nicolas Cage doing something weird with like an HP Lovecraft story. That's all I know, and that's all I needed to hear to say, okay, maybe it's worth a shot. Now moving on to some older films. 
and I saw The Gentleman in theaters. This is one that I did not review because I saw it like two weeks after it came out, but I really enjoyed The Gentleman, and so I decided to go on a little bit of a Guy Ritchie binge, and uh, I have not had a chance to watch these yet. These will be first time watches for me, which is gonna make people flip out, but Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch, I have never seen before. So I got both of these. These are kind of like the must-haves, I guess, if you're a Guy Ritchie fan, especially Snatch. So I wanted to check them out, have not had a chance to check them out yet. One that I did have a chance to check out after so many recommendations by my buddy Brian Lomax, and that is In Bruges. This is the director of uh, the Three Billboards Outside of Edmond, Missouri, which I absolutely loved. Uh, also, The Seven Psychopaths, which I thought was really cool, uh, Martin McDonough. And this is a movie that I had no idea what it was when it first came out. Like, you look at the cover, and I don't quite know exactly what it's about, but it's a really fun, interesting, and kind of gruesome movie, basically, where you have um, two assassins that are hiding out in Bruges because of a hit gone wrong, and you have Ralph, I can never, Fiennes, is that how you say his last name? But anyway, you got Ralphie boy here, who's like the mob boss they work for who's coming after them, and it's just a, a interesting little crime thriller comedy with some quirkiness and some, some very bloody directions that it goes. I had a blast with this movie. I thought it was pretty damn good, so I would say go out and buy it. If you saw my VFW review, the director of VFW also has a movie called Bliss, which apparently is like a vampire artsy film. So I have not had a chance to check this out yet, but I wanted to buy it to check it out because VFW I thought was so kick-ass. So if you know what Bliss is, if you've seen it, let me know down below. I've heard to expect very different things than VFW, but other than that, I don't know much about it. Oh. In Search of Darkness. This is a big horror documentary that just came out not too long ago. Um, I had the Corey Taylor Presents version. It was basically like a crowd-funded uh, documentary. My name is in the credits somewhere. So I have not had a chance to watch the whole thing yet because it's like four plus hours long, but I've seen like an hour long of it. Uh, and it's it's cool. It's It kind of goes through some of the 80s horror films and talks about you know, the impact that it had and some of the interesting behind the scenes stuff. And you get a lot of different people from within the genre and like people like Corey Taylor from outside of the genre talking about it. And uh, I love that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to check this one out and I was happy to contribute to it. My Bloody Valentine. Well, if you saw my channel, I do have a review of this out, which has all of my thoughts, but this is a movie that I was very excited to check out. This is the original one, not the remake because for the longest time, the original you couldn't find anywhere, and it finally got put back into print with uh, Scream Factory, as they very often do with horror classics. And this one didn't really hit the mark for me. Great gore, great kills, pretty cool killer, some interesting things going on with atmosphere, but I just thought the story and the action and the characters overall were kind of a bust. So this one was uh, slipping by with uh, Stream It. The 4K release of Shutter Island. This is a movie that when I saw it in theaters, I was kind of lukewarm on it. I was like, eh, some of those twists don't make sense to me. It seems very far-fetched. I saw some of that coming. I don't know. And upon rewatch, this movie really came to life for me because once you know where things end up in the end of the movie and you know the secrets, when you watch the film again, you watch it from a different perspective and it's almost more enjoyable watching the film with that perspective because everything that you see appears differently now. Um, I'm not going to spoil the ending, I know it's been out for quite a few years, but once you know what happens in the end, everything that you see looks different. Like when it looked odd before, now you know why it looks odd, and this movie kind of comes together in a brilliant way. So I've always been a big fan of it since then, and wanted to check out the 4K, so I would say go out and buy this. Boys in the Hood. Always loved this movie. Um, I've always loved uh, some of the movies of this genre of that time period as well, but this is probably the one that I would put on top. Uh, very tragic movie in a lot of ways, but a very good movie, great performances, uh, very good story, important themes in there that it explores, so can't recommend this one enough, and the 4K looked great, and it's a very kick-ass looking steelbook here, so definitely go out and buy that one. This is one that has been on the top of everybody's like best of all time list for a long time and I've never seen it. So just one day I was in the mood to watch it and I'm like, fuck it, I'll buy it. And then by the time I got it, I wasn't in the mood to watch it anymore. So I haven't seen it yet, but there will be blood. Um, it's, it's like a must see apparently. Um, it's always been a movie that gets talked about and gets brought up and I'm like, I need to see that damn thing. So that's why I bought it. I have no review for you though. Pumpkinhead 2, which was, I was kind of scouring the Scream Factory website and this was on the list of things that were about to go out of print and uh, 
I love the first pumpkin head and have never seen any of the sequels, so I wanted to go ahead and get this just in case this one's actually pretty cool and I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity, so I have no review for you yet. And the last film is one that uh, along the same lines of There Will Be Blood is a movie that I always hear mentioned, but I just never got a chance to check it out, and I was just bored one day scouring Amazon, and I was like, okay, I need to add this so I can watch it finally. And that's The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. <gasps> Longest title ever. Um, where you have Brad Pitt playing Jesse James, you have Casey Affleck playing Robert Ford. It's supposed to be like one of the best Westerns out there. Uh, I think Brian Lomax might have talked about it recently. Maybe he was the one that was like, okay, I need to buy that. I need to buy In Bruges, finally. So I finally got this one. I'll watch it eventually, but I have not checked it out yet. That is my off the shelves video for this month, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have seen some of these films that I have not seen, which is quite a few this month that I have not had a chance to check out yet, please let me know your reviews down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to this channel and you can check out all my other content. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.